First and foremost, a very welcome to everybody on the call. Today's topic is a, a pretty hot topic, I would say. Uh, a few key words in there, growth, <laughs> advocacy, and marketing at the purest form. So today, I suppose we're going to talk about advocacy um, and ideally about how you can use advocacy within your startup. So do you mind moving to the next slide? So let's just set the scene for everybody. How do you achieve growth with advocacy and how do rewards drive it? I'm not going to take the lead on this. Mohit will because he's obviously the thought leader with Zozo Day in this field. But just to set the scene for everybody on the call, I suppose a strategy around advocacy is very important, particularly around the customer journey. Um, we would say the customer journey is, I suppose, just that, a journey. And it's not a short one either. It's a kind of, I don't know, a cross-country road trip. Um, I think Mohit would agree, based on his background as a HubSpot agency, now a part of a, you know, a very high-performing startup. It's full of traffic. It's full of delays, uh, wrong terms, surprises, and sometimes even you know, accidents that you haven't uh, seen coming. And this is because it's not quite set in stone. Each process must be tailored to every customer. Okay, with that in mind, HubSpot has the idea of inbound as a marketing methodology and the typical customer journey for us. And I imagine Zozo Day has three phases, which would be uh, attract, convert and close. And the customer has to be delighted. Okay. So this is something that if executed properly, the customer journey becomes a very cyclical experience. Uh, the flywheel, I'm going to put that into the chat, is something we use in HubSpot. And then the best part of this methodology essentially is delighting the customers, um, often to turn the brand into like, I suppose, the customer as the evangelist who participates in adv advocacy for the company. OK, so this is something we're going to talk about today. Before we kick off, let's just break the ice with everybody on the call. So let's move to the next question. So, yeah, we have quite a few attendees here. Um, so we're going to start with, you know, a very simple question to begin. We're all founders or people who work in startups. So what did you actually want to be when you grew up? So please put it into the chat um, and give us an idea. You know, when you were growing up, what did you want to be? Was it an astronaut? Was it a solicitor? What did you want to be? Okay, so we have a few in there. Engineer, okay, very, very valuable trade. Artist, footballer, journalist, nice and archaeologist. Okay, I think that was a popular one back in my day. Pro footballer, wrestler. <laughs> Founder, nice. You're obviously uh, way ahead of the game. Dinesh wanted to be a footballer as well. Lawyer. Okay, so there's only one founder in that pack, but definitely a mixed professional swimmer. <laughs> okay. Join the circuits. Very good. Okay, well, with that in mind, let's kick off today's conversation. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. And I'd like to bring Mohit into the conversation. So my name's Cara. Uh, I'm going to guide you um, in terms of managing the chat, answering any questions in the chat, and I suppose support uh, Mohit during his presentation. But essentially, he is the thought leader when it comes to advocacy and obviously has a lot of experience, particularly within Zozo Day around advocacy and how you can use this uh, within the business. So without further ado, Mohit, welcome to the call. Thanks, Kara. Thanks for having me. And uh, 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 thanks, Upspot, for you know getting this opportunity and stitching everything together. Uh, as Kara was mentioning, uh, HubSpot and I go long back uh, from learning the tricks of the trade, becoming a marketeer to you know, uh, you know, working as a HubSpot agency, uh, then co-founding a startup, and then currently working at Zozo Day, where we have a product which uh, uh, you know deeply integrates with HubSpot in a big way, right? So. HubSpot has been uh, in my journey of, uh, you know, whatever journey I've had until now. So uh, thanks for this. Um, and uh, I'm excited today, uh, you know, to talk about this. Uh, it's something which is very close to, uh, uh, it, it's not something, one of those topics, which is very topical. It's something which I have followed as one of the first principles while solving the marketing problems, right? And uh, before I even get started, uh, uh, 
uh, it's always a privilege to be in a room full of founders. Uh, immense respect for founders. I've been a founder myself in the past. Uh, and uh, I always feel that, uh, uh, you know, someone said this, that, uh, that, you know, founders never run out of resources of time and money, uh, time and, uh, and uh, money and resource, uh, people, they run out of energy. So I hope none of you in this room run out of energy to execute what you are relentlessly looking to execute. Uh, I'm just going to share what I have seen to work and uh, as a principle for myself and see if it adds up. Uh, but you guys are in, uh, you know, uh, in you guys are in the, the, in the driving seat. So you will know better if this works or if it doesn't work. Right. Uh, I will leave it to you for you to experiment and see uh, if this works. Right. So uh, and uh, what the way we will uh, talk through this is. Uh, I know Kara is managing the chat uh, and Aditya is here around as well. So please ping back and, uh, you know, feed that input back to me. I would like, I can, uh, I can uh, make the conversation happen uh, to a certain uh, specific topic as well, depending upon how the, the, the room looks like, right? So it doesn't have to be a, a, a very stage uh, conversation. It can be like, Hey, let's, let's, let's discuss this topic more in uh, details from our experiences. Right. Uh, can I can I get started? Uh, or, or, uh, the floor is yours, Mohit. Go for okay. it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I'll get started in that case. So, uh, as as you are aware about the the topic, right? We're speaking about advocacy, something. So, like maybe that you know people are thinking, hey, we're talking about going to be talking about a referral program and, and things like that, right? So, I want to uh, expand that view as well, right? So. Uh, if you if, if the, the the webinar said that that advocacy the purest form of marketing is word of mouth right so uh, one quick question which anybody may have is that hey if it's going to be word of mouth why are we looking to game the system it is is very natural in its nature right if if i like something i talk about it to others and let it happen right so uh, we will do what we do best and word of mouth will follow so why do we need to talk about word of mouth separately right uh, the issue we run into is that uh, for word of mouth to be used as a strategy, it needs to have a scale, right? If it's if it doesn't meet a scale of a growth engine, it is something which will not make us uh, spend our time and resources into it, right? So that's why uh, word of mouth. And, and the other reason is that. Uh, uh, the, 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 with the current businesses, right? Like if, if somebody is happy with your business and if they, they like what they used, uh, if they will not act on it, if you do not make them act on it, uh, you know, their attention spans are lower, right? Uh, the notorious internet companies are famous for getting their, uh, their attention spans with endless scrolls, right? So, uh, so what I'm trying to get to is that uh, word of mouth is authentic and raw in nature, which is the need of the art because uh, our users are expecting us to be more authentic, but it still requires a predictable system where we can build a growth system that can create repeatable, predictable loops of growth via advocacy, right? So it cannot be just looked into, hey, it's, it's, it's because it's authentic and raw, it, it can be just left there and, uh, you know, nothing can take care of that. So what I'm trying to mention is that, uh, it requires a system that needs to be predictable and repeatable in nature, right? Uh, it, it, it requires, uh, we need to build growth systems that creates those loops of growth via advocacy, right? Uh, now, the systems are the ones that can compound, right? So what I mean by this, I think compound interest is a concept which, uh, you know, which was fairly introduced to us uh, early in our careers, in our, in, our, in our school days itself, right? Like there's a principal amount, you make an interest and the interest gets reinvested back in the principal, right? So can there be systems that compound themselves, right? Because if they do, the growth multiplier will be will be a big one and that can get our attention, right? As And you guys are founders, right? You guys have limited attention to give to anything, right? If And, and you guys are bootstrapped. So if, if that system does not work or compounds, it does not get your attention, right? So while funnels have made us think linearly, right? We, you know, the, what funnels make us do is that you do more, you put in more money, you put in more tactics and more channels, right? But that's not the case, right? We are living in the times when less is more, right? We're talking about that with less things, how can you do more, right? So 
I that's what I have understood and uh, from my experience that funnels do not represent how bootstrap companies uh, grow on advocacy, right? Uh, we need something where uh, we put in less, but the input grows by compounding effects, right? Uh, 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 it, it's simple, right? Like uh, there is a base principal amount. Uh, you uh, like, for example, let's say there's a new there's a set of users you have, right? Uh, how can I, my existing cohort of users lead to another cohort of users, right? So my principle is that I have 10 users today. Uh, next month, I want to make an interest on these users and get another set of users. So it's a compounding equation, right? So uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, a compounding equation will be much better than a linear equation, right? Where my users of today are getting me access to the users of tomorrow. Right, so it's like a new user comes on board. He perform, uh, he or she performs an action, creates an output, and leads to the next set of users. Right, so that's the kind of a uh, system we call it. You know, there are different terms for it: uh, flywheels, uh, loops, uh, and whatnot. But what, what I'm trying to say is that system that needs to compound. Right, the system needs to compound. Uh, 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 and and you know somebody. Uh, might say that, hey, why do I need to go for a system that compounds? I will do what I want to do and word of mouth will follow, right? Because it's it's raw in nature. But uh, if you look at the competitive landscape, we have a shared uh, you know group of customers, we have shared channels and uh, we have shared talent, right? So if other, other players in the market are going to compound their growth using these systems, you'll be forced to do it, right? Uh, and, and if you won't do it, uh, somebody else will do it and, and they will do it before you. Right? Quick question uh, in there from Felipe Mohit. Um, what's your stance on um, using monetary rewards? Are they effective for advocacy? Uh, so yes, uh, monetary rewards are effective. I'll tell you, I, I've covered that in a little later part also, Philippe. And uh, I would say uh, it, it should be in line with the core motivation of the user for using that platform. To give you an example here, uh, if uh, let's take an example of Uber, right? Uber cracked this whole referral program very well on both sides of the marketplace for the riders and for the drivers as well, right? Now, for drivers, the major incentive is to make more money, right? So the incentive for them should be more tied to the amount they can make if they refer to an unnew driver, right? On the other hand, the rider has an incentive of you know, maybe trying the new uh, something on uh, some, some something else, right? Try getting more rides, getting uh, trying something new, or trying a food coupon, so other things, right? So the motivation for the user should be looked into before incentivizing it. Uh, what to be incentivizing it with, right? Uh, so I, I will be covering that part in 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 the type when we talk about the systems uh, we can, tend to create, right? So. Uh, yeah, so I, I just want to uh, mention about the fact that, uh, yeah, this, this is with the compound, they, uh, you know, a user comes on, performs an action, creates an output and leads to the next set of users, right? So now uh, let's go to the next part where, uh, let's look at some of the best examples of referral programs. Uh, I'm sure when you were coming to this webinar, you all must have got, hey, you know what, that's the referral program I really respect. Right. So if you have something, uh, Kara, it'll be great to get some inputs from the chat. Uh, I, I think I can see it myself here as well. Um, uh, I'm putting in examples here now of programs yeah, yeah. within HubSpot. So if, if people have examples of the, the, the reference programs they have uh, admired or also I would love to know them uh, before I go into the next part of the presentation where, uh, you know, we we look at it in a in a in a from a perspective uh, as well, right? Any any inputs coming in, Kara, or in the chat? Yeah, there's quite a few. So La Avon brand is a good one. There, Ahmed has put in. Okay. Coca Cola is always okay. a good one. Okay. I mean. Have you any examples that you, you you've yeah, used? Yeah. No, so I'll I'll tell you. So yeah, those those are good examples. What you what people have put in the chat, uh, but uh, you know some of them which comes to my mind. Uh, Dropbox is one of the companies mm -hmm. that did that in right in the start. Uh, you know at the, of this century, uh, then uh, followed by Airbnb. So these peak companies and others as well. They're known for the kind of referral programs they've set and use it as a growth lever, right? Now, now. 
Uh, Sorry, free now is like a taxi service. So yeah, Adele is yeah. just saying they, when you land in the airport, they give you 20 euro to ride Correct. to the next destination via right. so, free now. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to come to uh, is uh, uh, and uh, is the fact that this is the the companies who have got success with referral programs, they are not just programs. They are mm -hmm. systems, and they are yes. built with you know they're built with. Uh, product channel and mode of uh, first time value in context right uh, one second i'm just gonna does not only mean referral referrals right a referral itself is not a loops you build them by uh, you know considering product you look at channel and you look at mo mode of um, the mode of first time value right so i'll give you an example here what i mean right like airbnb when they build their referral program uh, there was an engineering team for three months that that wrote 30,000 line of code, right? They considered product and the channel they will use as a part of the referral program. So if, if, you're in, if you know about the example called uh, uh, Twitch, right? Twitch got acquired by Amazon uh, back in 2016 for over a billion dollars. They built their product on YouTube, right? So what I'm trying to say is that there is uh, there is always a habit transfer, right? Like you need to build, to make the most of the advocacy in the product, you need to build your product in context of a channel, which you're gonna be using as a growth part, right? So Twitch use YouTube to grow. Uh, and if you, if you track that back, YouTube used uh, MySpaces and other video places to you know post, let people post their videos, right? And MySpaces used email. So what I'm trying to get to is that, there is a, your users are already having a habit of being in one place. They're currently on some specific channels. You need to build your product in the context of the channel to make the most of the transaction habit. And, and we saw that with the example of Airbnb. So uh, I'm going to share this story. I'm not sure if everyone in the room knows this, but Airbnb did this clever thing where if I signed up my property on Airbnb, uh, you know, 10 years back, they would send me a link. These founders will send me a link saying that, hey, you know what, you can uh, set this property up on Craigslist as well with a single link, right? Now, they made it so easy for me to just click on this link and it'll automatically get listed on Craigslist. And Craigslist was a popular platform or channel where a lot of people will go for their requests or looking for things itself. And they, what they got out of this was they got the traffic of Craigslist on Airbnb, right? Now, what I'm seeing here is that what this, this hack was not thought in silo. This hack was thought in the context of their product, the motivations for the users and the channel they want to leverage to get that initial traction, right? Uh, uh, so uh, uh, that's that's what I'm trying to get to it as, as well, that uh, they grew by piggybacking on the Craigslist traffic, right? Uh, 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 and, and that's something we have to also look at it when, because we do not control the rules of the channel. We only control the product. So how do we build our product that fits in well into the channel, adds the layer of growth on top of it, right? Uh, and so what primarily I'm trying to say is don't think your product separately, your product has to be thought in context of acquisition uh, and the first time value, uh, how will you capitalize on the first time value when the person comes on the platform, right? Nice, uh, quick question in Mohit in the Q and A, apologies. So uh, just from uh, Maria, uh, dining in from Madrid, she said, how do you decide what you should use in return for people's efforts on a referral program? Like what would you use to encourage people to continue like referring you or advocating for you? Uh, what would you, uh, I need to understand the question a little bit better. Uh, Cara, can you repeat that please? Yeah, so it can be difficult to decide what someone will want in return for their efforts. So how do you decide what reward to give, I suppose would be the word, within the referral program in order Correct. to be successful or you know, make sure the advocate refers? Correct. So uh, uh, you're right. It's, it's not an easy feat to understand like what will work, but the way through that is the experimentation part, like where, uh, you know, you start with a certain options to start with, right? Like, hey, I want to, uh, let me start with something like an Amazon uh, voucher maybe, right? And from that, you understand what are people redeeming it on, right? Mm -hmm. or, or, or trying to, look, the best is uh, to understand the motivation and try to figure out a basket of 
uh, things that will work well with them. But yeah. again, uh, it will depend. For example, some cases, your product offering itself, right? Like what Dropbox could do, right? They could offer a feature of their product as something which, uh, you know, to give us an incentive itself, right? Uh, uh, if G2 reviews give Amazon vouchers uh, to give reviews itself on the platform. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's it's more about understanding motivation as from the product perspective and then experimenting with it. Like, hey, uh, can start with the array of options like, gift cards from Amazon, maybe Uber or other things, so what people use, and then narrowing it down to what is working better and what people are redeeming more on, right? So that's what I would say with, uh, uh, yeah, anything else, uh, Kara? otherwise I can, I, I'm covering these parts, uh, these questions. Oh, yeah. a little no, later as well. yeah. Ray is just thanks to, into the chat, perfect. Yeah, uh, and, and one more thing I would like to, you know, mention here is that what if, if we try to do this today, what Airbnb did, right, 10 years back, it will not work, right? Why? Because uh, it, I'm not sure if you've heard about this uh, law of shitty click-through rates, right? That uh, every tactic uh, that gets discovered, gets optimized, gets adopted by masses, and that becomes fatigue, right? Now, Craigslist understood this, you know, within some time, and, and they blocked uh, you know, anyone coming and posting and taking the traffic out of trade list, right? So these are very hacks, which are, uh, you know, which are time bound, right? Uh, which have their own shelf life. So what I'm trying to say is that we need to continuously invent these things and become a growth driver for all of us, right? What you're looking to be doing, right? So uh, yeah, uh, I'll, uh, yeah, so loops are growth systems based on the advocacy. I think we have established that until now, we have established that these loops need to be created with product channel and mode of uh, monetization as a, uh, as, as, uh, in context of that. Now let's look at some of the, the examples of these loops, right? Like I think I'm, everyone will be like, hey, this looks all good to do, but can we paint a finer painting with more examples in place? So, so let's go into that, right? So a loop looks like this. A new user comes on board, invites or takes an action, branches out to other people, and then shares it on some channel and gets a response and a new user comes back in. This is the kind of loop we're talking about, right? Now, now if you look at this loop, right? Now this loop can have multiple forms, right? It can, uh, and, and, and this loop can branching out to multiple contexts. Like for example, one is where uh, companies like Dropbox, right? Like if I'm working on a document and I'm working with Kara today before this webinar, I want to collaborate with her, right? I sign up on Dropbox. I I make a document. Now I need to collaborate with Kara on that. So I will send her an invite to come and work with me on that, right? A Google Docs for that matter, right? And she will come and she will accept the invite and become a new user to Dropbox itself. Now, what happened in this case was the product's natural way of using it required me to collaborate or communicate with something in my network, right? Now, Kara was was somebody in my network she was a target for the product and she was not using the product. So these three conditions have to be true for this kind of a loop to work, right? Imagine if uh, she was not in my network and if she was not using the product at all, if she was using the product, then this loop will not work, right? Uh, That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Total network, target for product and not using the product. So uh, it works very well uh, for 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 when when uh, when there is a very uh, when your product already has a sense of collaboration and uh, you know communication in that itself, right? Uh, uh, there's a trigger frequency for it. Uh, it while these kind of loops led to have, for example, I may be only collaborating with two or three people, right? Today, but the conversion rate will be high here, right? When I when I refer Kara to come and co- collaborate with me on Dropbox she will have to do it because we are working on a webinar together, right? So that's why the response will be higher. But if I look at another example, so this is an example of Dropbox, right? Where I share the file, I share with her and she comes on board and she starts using it as well. Now here the response rate will be higher, but the number of people I'll share it with will be less. So I may not be able to share this with 50 people at one point in time, but if the the number of people I share it with, they will come and convert for sure, right? Now, Let's look at Loom as an example. I'm sure you guys are aware of this product. It's a video recording product where you can record yourself and send a, a, a screen recording with yourself uh, to other people, right? It's used by sales teams quite a bit. 
Uh, it's used by demo uh, GTM team as well, right? Now, what happens here is a new user comes on board, uh, creates a video, sent to another person, now shares the video with others on the message, they train on email, and the other person also watches the video and becomes a user on Loom, right? It's another example of where the branching is less, but the conversion is high, the CTR is higher, right? Uh, here, the user network is a constraint, right? So I will only share it with people whom I want to work with or I have to work with, right? But that's not the case with every loop, right? I, I'll give an example of other loops as well. Uh, uh, before this, uh, uh, like for example, the, there's another loop which I want to talk about, which is here, uh, is a casual contact loop, right? Have you guys used HubSpot's uh, meeting cal booking calendar feature? Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are using HubSpot, but there's a feature of HubSpot where you can look at my calendar and block a time next week with me on that, right? And now if, if you want to meet me, I will send you that link. You will come on that. There'll be a snapshot of my calendar. You will choose a time and it'll automatically book yourself, right? Now, products like this, they had high branching effect because my link of my meeting calendar is available in my email signature. But the number of people who will start using HubSpot's feature for this specific need of theirs will be lesser, right? Products like Webflow, like, uh, so Webflow is a great CMS, right? And, and uh, uh, you build your websites on that. Now, on the right-hand side, if you don't go for the paid plan, there's a thing called Made in Webflow. Now, it, it's, it's, it's another viral loop, but that is more casual contact where the branching is higher. The number of people who get exposed to this is higher, but not every person who get exposed to will convert into a user for Webflow, right? Other example is uh, Typeform, which is another survey tool. Uh, HubSpot chat, right? HubSpot chat on different websites is also that. So, so if you look at the difference between the Dropbox example and the examples which I just gave in, the difference is that the, the number of branching uh, out possibilities and the response rate. Now, each loop is different. What I'm trying to get to is that each loop is different. Now, if I compare this with the Uber driver referral loop, right? Uh, that is very different. The number of drivers in my uh, community, if I'm a driver, are, are not as many as the number of people who can get from a website. Right? And that requires an incentivization also in place. Right? Uh, if you do X, I, uh, you get Y. Right? Uh, it should work for both invitee and the new user. It should be meaningful for both. Right? Uh, uh, it should be incentives should be aligned with the core motivation of the use case. Uh, uh, that's something which you should look at. Now, uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's, and now this is the very, very dependent on users, right? Like the, the whole fuel of running these loops are users and user action. There's another kind of loop where we look at the content loop, right? Uh, again, uh, I cannot not talk about these one because HubSpot has been great at this, right? Like HubSpot is the whole, the, the product company that actually made inbound methodology, right? So new user signed up, the company created content. They distribute on Google and new user signed up again, right? So now content loop also can be of uh, two types, right? One is the user generated content, uh, like Pinterest uses that, uh, you know, where the user generated content is shared by users and they bring in a loop. Now there's another type of it when the user generated content is distributed by companies, right? Let's take an example of Medium, right? A new user signs up, makes his own blog, writes a post. Now, Google company distributes that. The company distributes that blog onto Google and people find that content and then sign up themselves for a, uh, as well for a medium blog, right? So this is an example of where user generated company distributed uh, loop, right? Now, what happens in this case is uh, content becomes the constraint, right? Uh, volume of content created is the strength of the loop. If, for example, in my loop, people do not write loop, uh, blog, a blog post so often, then this loop will not work, right? So the volume of content that is getting created is the, the constraint for this loop, right? Uh, there are other examples of uh, content loops such as uh, you know, the company generated company distributed like WebMD, right? WebMD, if you've heard about WebMD, where this company content created, but it's used by company to distribute it and, and the new users find that out using the, the, the SEO on, on Google, right? Now, here what happens is contact has to be authentic in nature, right? Uh, and then now, uh, 
here the shareability becomes an important fact factor like for example if hubspot has a guide on how to run email campaigns how much i'm able to share it up with my users also adds another layer of uh, virality to it right now i think what i'm trying to say is every loop is different right uh, not all loops are created equal and loops are not only science and art they also have their maths right uh, uh, and now that's the most important part which i want you to take away from today's session that uh, they're not all created equal they also have a maths behind them and if that maths does not work that loops will not work for us right so let's look at an example of slack slack has this loop as well where uh, you know it it has a as a loop where 1000 people signed up uh, now each person calls up in their team or they invite their 120 teams and they they invite to other people and then they other people also sign up right so this loop goes on 1000 people signed up there are 120 teams coming on board in there these many invites sent out these many clicks came in and 540 people signed up out of that right now this loop will go on and then out of that 292 people signed up again so i i assume some percentage from each step right uh, of conversion now if this loop continuously runs without any uh, you know interference from outside uh, at the end of 10th cycle uh, it will have four signups left itself right so what i'm trying to say is in the end this loop produced 2161 signups in cross so how do we calculate the effectiveness of this loop right uh, we can calculate by v is a number which is uh, 540 by 1000 and that becomes a growth multiplier 1 minus so this growth multiplier is almost at a 2x growth multiplier equation right now i'll tell you just bear with me for one more 30 more seconds and i'll show you how these loops are different right so now imagine the same loop happening every 7 days and happening every 4 days now the time frame from each loop also matters right now if the same loop was happening over 4 7 days it will produce a, a growth multiplier 1.9x but if it happens over 4 days it will produce a growth, uh, growth multiplier 2.15x right so what i'm trying to say is that loops need to be uh, you know loops need activation energy they they need to be feed in with external stimuli right and uh, we need uh, and and if, when the loops start working you'll start seeing the different problems on happening on the on in between which needs to be fixed in some way or the other so act, having an access to a growth stack which is with rewards right which you're figuring things out is very helpful when you're trying to make your loop equations work right because we saw that if this loop can be functioning at this level give you a better growth rate right so uh, access to growth stacks via rewards uh, that feed in the experimentation and feed in the loops is something uh, which will help you set up your loops uh, in your product and your marketing journey as well right uh so uh yeah that's that's uh, the gist of i wanted to cover i may have rushed some parts of it happy to go back to them uh you know help me uh, ask some questions where i can narrow down to some of the topics which uh, and, and deep dive into the certain parts of the presentation as well yeah but apart from that i think uh, that's what I, the point i want to drive today in today's uh, webinar yeah Nice. Okay, so we've got a few questions in there now, Mohit, which is great. So we've got one in from Anna, which is okay. Thanks, Mohit. Uh, I have some idea of what a glow a growth loop is right now, but how do you choose the right loop or know it's the right loop without putting too much work into it to get the results before you start? Right. So Anna, this uh, the simple question, and you will not be very amused by the answer, but <laughs> it is that uh, you will have to try multiple loops at one point in time, right? Uh, that's what we have done as well. Like you will take multiple bets and let data prove us wrong, right? Like uh, we have to have those, uh, you know, six week windows to see if this is working or not working. Is the needle moving or not, right? So uh, the way I like to do it, I I like to uh, experiment with multiple loops. what i mean by multiple loops is not one product concept going on multiple channels but multiple product plus channel plus uh, first time value combinations at one point in time to see which ones working better right uh, my favorite ones are user generated the viral ones and uh, the content generated ones at the same time so again it's it's more about seeing if the numbers are working or not so um, mm-hmm. you know tracking them on a week on week basis every action as you saw in airbnb also right like the founders themselves 
for mailing this uh, itself. So it does not, before we scale it, we need to do it uh, to see if the loop is working or not, right? I'm not sure if I helped you answer it, but the answer is that experiment with multiple loops at the same time uh, to see which one's working and let numbers be the only way to win which one's working well. Okay, yeah, no, that's, that's useful. So like, for example, Anna, like HubSpot built, I suppose for us, we, 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 uh, we made sure a lot of our loops, and I don't know if this is the correct terminology, Mohit, it was like product loops. So like a large number of our tools were free to small to medium size, exactly. particularly, exactly. you know, startups. So the website grader, which I put into the chat to, to manage yes. your growth. I think the email signature one was early days before I started working in HubSpot, I used um, and then we had like a free tier on our product. So it's like the seed and grow idea of, okay, you use this product for free. Uh, these freebies get a lot of attention. Then you get some signups and then this eventually turns into a customer. So I suppose a lot of our loops were essentially focused on like product. And and, and that was something that really allowed us right. to improve, improve our product as well, because we had a lot of people using them and our free tools and it made us better. And we could ship the product in a, based on the problems people had with the product. And that kind of created a, maybe a B2B viral loop or v yeah. growth loop. So yeah, no, definitely we are, we are, we are sitting in place where HubSpot has done this very well. Uh, you know, so there are a lot of examples from there, Kara. What, what it tells us that, you know, do not, let's not take referral. I think the word referral program underplays the amount of work that goes in to create something which is valuable. You spoke about the website grader, right? I'm sure a quarter of engineering sprint must have gone to build that product, a layer of top of that, right? Email signature was a quick one. So what I'm trying to you know, drive that from is it should not be an afterthought. It should be thought within your product and channel in context, right? So let's not say, hey, you know what? I want a referral program. Let's create a landing page and let's say people who will come and refer us to more business and and let's give them an incentive, right? That's a very transactional and a very siloed way of looking mm -hmm. at uh, growth through advocacy, right? It needs to be looked in across a product channel and how will you calculate on that value when the person comes on the platform? Nice. I have a question in there now, Mohit. Um, and okay, so it's from um, a different Anna actually. And what she's asking is, how do you get referrals without asking for them? How do you get referrals without asking for them? So word of mouth is very powerful. Right. What if you right. want to get referrals without asking directly from like a referral program? What do you do? I mean, right, right. Uh, you know, it's it's a part of the human psychology that, right? Like uh, uh, when we are angry and we're not happy about some things, we don't need any external stimuli to go write a review about it. Uh, but when we're happy about it, uh, it requires an extra stimuli, right? And uh, I want to touch upon this concept of referral gap. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's something which is a common term. And in in a in a room of hundred people, if you ask them, "Hey, were you happy with the product? Will you refer us to your your friends and uh, mm -hmm. your network?" If seventy percent people say that they will, less than thirty percent people go and actually do it, right? Yeah. So this is the referral gap, right? So uh, the short answer is that we need to remind them. We need to make it easier for them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, by using their current habits, uh, you know, but but our product needs to uh, be out there uh, because without asking, uh, you know, it will not lead to a, a sustainable growth strategy for us. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, the, the purest form of word of mouth uh, can keep on happening, but it can it will not be a a growth lever that can keep on paying us as we move forward and needs our attention, right? Yeah. So you need to be in front of your users understand what's the right time in the journey to ask also right uh, you know be understood this about our product right when when the first when the, when we are in the whole business of rewards incentives and payouts and when when our, our users first sent their first reward they were the happiest because they yeah. got the job done yeah and that was the right time for them to be referring us to a friend of nice. course so yeah go on. sorry well, no I'm not to cut across you it's just even comes to mind it's like the company's like well for example, if you take like, I don't know, like Uber, if you take Amazon, if you take um, Spotify, like all these companies are almost built into your lives. Like they're all doing the same thing, but they're, you know, they haven't changed the playbook in terms of what they're selling, e.g. taxi rides or music, but it's, they're really exceeding the expectations in terms of um, I suppose going above and beyond for their customers. So like, you know, that's something I suppose 
you can get referrals by exceeding expectations and kind of like you did, you know, giving the right thing at the right time. So the person eventually raves about your service because you've delighted them essentially by going above and beyond, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A question in there from Ahmed. Uh, can we have an example on merchandise product loop? Okay. Uh, merchant. So I, I'll be talking about an e-commerce. Uh, maybe I think that's what Ahmed refers to an e-commerce company example of a loop, right? Uh, uh, yes. That's what he said. Yes. Got it. Sounds good. So, uh, so yes, e-commerce companies have done these loops as well. Uh, you know, uh, this can happen more on the, uh, the user generated content, right? Like you can ask your customers to share a review uh, uh, or, you know, like you on social media channels uh, or, uh, or, or even, so I can't think of a, an example right away on my back, but uh, uh, I, I, I know that a lot of companies like Shopify merchants, uh, have uh, you know these things in place where uh, you can ask your users and they become the your your voice right so this whole insight that users tell better stories than you do right so and that's very applicable in case of uh, e-commerce and a merchandise setup as well right mm -hmm. if I've consumed a certain uh, 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 fashion apparel and I, I think I was very happy with it I as a I would want I should be going and talking about it on social networks or or, or telling others about it. And this can be incentivized by uh, different incentives, uh, maybe you know some of the rewards for that and other things, right? So this can be done in that perspective, but I do not have a, a, a well-known example. Uh, Dollar Shave Club is another example that comes yeah. to my mind uh, when it comes to uh, you know, a merchandise who could do a, a viral loop there, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they're definitely more there, but uh, Dollar Shave Club was bought by Unilever, no, for like a billion euros back about yeah. five years ago. And the yeah. reason Unilever bought them was because they had built up so much data that Unilever didn't yeah. have, Correct. and they could use that then within their business to get obviously, yeah. hopefully more referrals and you know context behind why people were using you know the product, for example. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. It says Ahmed. Okay, how do, how do you get referrals? Okay, there's a lot of focus on referrals. How do you get referrals from existing clients at low cost? Uh, Sanya wants to know. Uh, existing clients at low cost, right? Uh, no pressure, Mohesh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, I, I love and breaking fast. These problems uh, You know, these problems are very exciting because uh, the, the problem is exciting, but it reads more information, right? Like uh, when you say clients, it can be, the spectrum, right? Like, I'll tell you one more thing that uh, it, it is also the ARPU, uh, the average revenue per user possible, right? As a spectrum, right? For example, mm -hmm. from an e-commerce company, okay, from a gaming company mm -hmm. to an e-commerce company to a B2B SaaS company to an enterprise company. So they mm -hmm. all have different levels of ARPU they can make from a customer, right? A gaming company can make an X amount, but an e-commerce company can make more than that. A SaaS company can make more than that per customer. An enterprise company makes, you know, six six figures from an every customer, right? Now, now depending upon where you are in the spectrum, right? We'll have to look at uh, the product journeys of the who are the users who are, who have the capabilities of even referring in place, right? For example, I'll tell you, uh, we we have an employee engagement product uh, called Impulse, uh, where we help our, our yeah. teams to set up, you know, better culture. Uh, for the places by providing them a survey and our rewards and recognition tool, right? Now, then the buying committee consists of multiple uh, people from an HR manager to a CIO uh, to maybe a founder as well, right? Now, at who's the more ref, who's who, which persona is more referable? Like, you know, who, who will refer more, right? We have found out that HR managers like to talk about the new programs they've implemented in their company, right? So they become an audience whom I should ask for a referral for. So what I'm trying to short answer for this is, uh, you know, it needs to be broken down as per the case. And that's why I think era, you know, we should talk about the offer which we have for people who are on the call today that, uh, you know, you guys can block a, a, a 30 minute free strategy uh, discussion with us where HubSpot team and myself and my product manager, mm -hmm. Sridhar will be available on the call to break down the specific problem of your context and see what kind of possibilities available for a loop, right? Because uh, to be able to do it, I'll be 
you know, giving a wrong answer, which I do not want to, you know, give it out. And it'll be, uh, you know, it'll be prematurely uh, concluding uh, without understanding the full context. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, from an enterprise to an SME, to an e-commerce, to a gaming company, the loops differ, the incentives differ, uh, the frequency differs uh, because uh, the equations are different there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that's a good point. Aditya, you might put in the access for everybody on the call to book those uh, consultations because I think they're quite valuable yeah. and maybe put it into the chat as well. Yeah, so um, I think uh, uh, this is the link uh, which you guys can set up. Uh, and uh, if you are a, uh, uh, you know, a bootstrap founder who's looking to solve these problems, uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, limited seats for uh, these 30 minute study sessions over the next two weeks. Uh, where, uh, you know, uh, myself, uh, another product manager from my team and uh, a member from HubSpot's team will come on the call, will break down the problem statement which you are mentioning about and, and then see what's possible, right? Uh, you guys can, do you have access to this link on the chat uh, or do you want me to put this up as well? Yeah, no, that's, um, Aditi is putting it into the chat now. Uh, so cut and copy. And yeah, we'll follow up with this. Uh, we'll distribute the content and resources across via email as a channel. And hopefully um, you'll be able to book that. Yeah, uh, and uh, I, I would uh, recommend because uh, this these uh, this 30 minute or less than that uh, sessions we're talking about will be actually about breaking down a problem statement, right? And, and, and being true to the problem statement, that will be actually the value add uh, uh, you know, to understand, uh, you know, what can work better for your user context. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And I mean, listen, all of that is, is super relevant. And I think even just having uh, the option then to book a consulting call is, is vital. Yeah. Um, uh, just a point, I would, sorry, Kara, I'm interrupting. I would like no. to add a point uh, about uh, the fact that if you're a HubSpot user already and, and you're looking for these hacks, uh, uh, you know, uh, what we have built ourselves is that we have automated the the process of sending rewards and incentives through HubSpot using workflows. So workflow is a very, very, very powerful feature of HubSpot, right? Like you can build workflows. Mm -hmm. If this happened, trigger this. If this happened, trigger B, right? So we have a stack available where HubSpot and Zozode Plum can together help you to get those loops running wherever there's a problem, right? Like uh, I, I do not want to take you through specific ones, but we can discuss it on the, on the calls, which you, you know, uh, and the, uh, which we, people may set up with us, right? So uh, having access to tech stacks like this helps you experiment more, right? You do not know what's going to be the new, the next Airbnb hack, which will be spoken about 10 years down the line in a webinar like this, right? Uh, uh, and, um, but but you will get to it if you have access to the tech stack to experiment with it. Right. Nice, nice. And I think one of, uh, as you've mentioned Airbnb a few times, Mohit, I think one of their largest costs uh, back in the day was actually getting professional photographs for Zin to actually take pictures of uh, the potential um, people that would actually be showing their houses on Airbnb. But I suppose that made it easy. So like making it easy for people to advocate is super yeah. important um, yeah. because when it comes to, I suppose, advocacy marketing, you know, in HubSpot, we split our customer advocates into two groups. So like there's people who just naturally love our brand and they'll do whatever it takes to share about it. And it's great. Um, but also, you know, you want to make sure people are incentivized, you know, as well. Uh, but neither is better or worse. But I suppose if you make it easy for them to share, that's always a good start as well. Yeah, <laughs> easy yeah. to, to do that, you know. So um, any other questions? Anything else that we want to put into the chat? I know we've had a lot of examples. Uh, we've had a few people ask for more examples, but we've had Apple, we've had Uber, we've had um, Dollar Shave Club of good marketing, I suppose, advocacy ex examples. Any other examples, Mohit, you want to talk to today? Uh, I think uh, uh, I spoke about WebMD. I spoke about HubSpot. I spoke about uh, Webflow for that matter. I, I spoke about, so I think I've covered uh, most of them here. Uh, uh, I, can, I can maybe look at my notes if I'm missing out on anything, but um, I covered most of the examples in, in the webinar itself. Um, yeah, and I, I can, you know, we can even share this presentation as a, as a follow-up thing with the emails with the people. Uh, 
Uh, so they can also have a look at it uh, for the thing. But WebMD, HubSpot, Medium, G2, Quora. Quora is another example, which is a user generated, uh, you know, thing, which is, uh, you know, increasing and, you know, it's, it's getting access to people as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I think- I have a good uh, example of how you use Quora for maybe one of these loops. I was, I was in um, this uh, renewable energy company in Holland there uh, about two weeks ago, and their product was like an oil tanker that went underwater. And he was like, Cara, I listen, I don't know how to do marketing or marketing strategy to talk about such a niche product, you know. But one thing he said that worked for him was that he put, there's actually a group on Cora that like support this product. And he put into the chat in Cora and asked, you know, what people would like to learn about his product. And he was going to create a white paper. So people started commenting on what, what they'd like to know about this tanker under the water. And he basically, on their advice, created a white paper, put it on his website. I think he generated about 80 leads for such a niche, niche wow. you know, so it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's to your yeah. point, you know, it's, it's really about doing business based on, you know, what your product is, who your customer is, you know, like what the culture is, even your values, you know, like, uh, like YouTube is something that Red Bull use. But if you're an accountant, I mean, maybe you do a white paper. So it's kind of all backtracking on that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, anything else? Uh, any other questions? Otherwise, uh, yeah, the links are in the chat. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I can answer any other question if it's there. All good. And one, one more fun yeah. fact uh, before this webinar, I, I, I got access to the GTP, uh, chat GTP engine, and I, I typed in this, uh, if you can see on my screen, uh, how do you drive advocacy driver growth via a bootstrap startup? Okay. And I got this as an answer from them. <laughs> That's the, the open AI's new model. Uh, I hope I've done a better job than this uh, <laughs> on the webinar. Uh, uh, it says existing network leverage social media, but but pretty good. They're getting there, right? Uh, uh, I, I, for the context of the users, uh, do you know about that the chat GPT AI model, which has been re uh, recently launched last week, where you can when you can write anything to them and they reply back, right? So before the session, I I asked the chat uh, AI system. You know what should I talk about in the webinar? Okay, and 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 they told me about these things. Okay, uh, oh. uh, and this is all automated. It's all AI driven. This is the answer given by AI, right? Oof. When I asked him this question, oh, I heard the question. Interesting. Would you? Uh, so so I I just just say that you know this is uh, this is where we are at right now. I hope I've done a better job than this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then AI today at least. Let's see what happens when we go forward, right? So that's it about from my side, guys. Uh, uh, good to, thanks for the opportunity to speak about, uh, you know, what I uh, feel passionate about uh, as a concept as well. Uh, for any other feedback and uh, any other uh, place to connect, we have those links, sign up for them, sign up for them and, you know, we can get in touch with, our, with you guys. Yeah. Thank nice. you, thanks for the thing. I hope, uh, Kara, over to you now, I'm good. Yeah, great job. Thanks for the time. I think uh, there was a lot of uh, benefit in terms of examples there. We've um, actually final one. We had people dial in from 12 different countries, from APAC to EMEA, one from LATAM, and obviously yourself over in, in North America. So um, great mix. We'll follow up with the recording. And thanks, everybody, for the time. Have a good rest of day and night when you get there, guys. Thanks very much, Mohit. Ciao, ciao.